Hello, everybody. My name's James. Welcome to another Planet FPL Clash of the Correspondents, the first of two this week. And we'll be guested during the course of this week by all four of our correspondents whose teams have a double game week 27. And I should note, we are just recording this immediately following Liverpool's 7-0 victory against Manchester United. And we can all confirm that we all took minus fours for Liverpool players and sold them a one wild card this week. So we're in this club together. Me and Swidge will obviously discuss that more tomorrow. But let me introduce our correspondents. Firstly, our Southampton correspondent, Matt Samuel. How are you, Matt? Better than I was last time around. Good. Glad to hear it, mate. <laughs> and our Brentford correspondent, Tom Med. How are you, Tom? Yeah, good mate, not bad at all. Good stuff. Uh, Matt, you, you keep coming on the pod when you have good results and that doesn't yeah. feel like that's happened a lot this season. So <laughs> well done. Congratulations. <laughs> How are you feeling after the victory against Leicester? And was it fortuitous on reflection? Yeah, um, it was definitely fortuitous. Uh, I know yourself brought an Ian Archer, didn't you? Should have had a hat-trick. Um, yeah, <laughs> what, what can you do? But it's, no. it's, there's a long list of things for my wild card, <laughs> honestly, mate. <laughs> But no, we needed a bit of luck uh, yesterday and, and we certainly got it. Obviously, when Prousey missed the pen, I thought, oh, here we go. And then when we scored the goal, VAR review, we've had a few of those go against us this season. Thankfully, this one came off and uh, somehow we, we held on. Um, it was fortuitous because we gave Leicester a lot of the ball. Um, it took us half an hour to get going. And say the final 15 minutes of the first half, we looked good. Um we changed formation yesterday. We, we we changed from a 4-2-2-2 to more of a 4-2-3-1, which allowed Charlie to obviously get ahead of Prousey and Lavi. And we've all been asking for the Charlie. three of them to play. Yeah. Oh, he's, he's, yeah, it's not our, it's not our guys. It's Charlie. <laughs> just, just, I was going to say, just clarify yeah. that for people. It's, it's South Caraz, yeah. So um, we got him obviously in front. And it was a bit of a surprise. When, when we seen the lineup, people thought, oh, you know, Prousey's obviously going to play the, the 10 role. But Alcaraz was, it was in there and he was exceptional. Until they obviously stupidly knee slid, did the knee slide and got yeah, injured. Got injured and then came off after fifty-five minutes. So hopefully it's it's nothing too serious. But that that meant we got a bit more width, um, a bit more possession in the middle of the park, which we've been crying out for because we don't really have the technical ability, I think, in the squad to play the four-two-two-two at the moment. Um, it means that Kamal Deem or Sulemana um, has been playing obviously as a striker off of Onoachu. It's not his best position. Um, I mean, his his goal tally in previous seasons um, hasn't been great. He looks a lot better when he's playing wide um, and he can drive at players. So that that worked. We just need to, I think, keep working on it and get a bit more confidence because we were playing with so much fear for the first half an hour. Obviously, the crowd were, were quiet. There was booze. There, there was people left, right and centre of me just moaning about every missed pass. We're obviously playing out from the back incredibly slowly. It wasn't great. Second half, I think Sellers needs to learn a little bit about game management. The, the, the substitutions that he made made it worse. Um, you know, when you're taking off Che Adams, who I thought had a brilliant game, Walcott, another top game, deserved to start. You then bring on Mara, Adam Armstrong, Elia That They're not the best. You know, they're, they definitely shouldn't be starting. And when they came on, there was no one to hold the ball up. And all they do is run around there. Oh, I say Adam Armstrong is probably a, a poorer version of Shane Long at the moment in, in Saints. And that, that that really sums it up. So we held on and we got a massive three points. And obviously we all know results went our way this weekend, which was huge for us. And obviously today, again, the, the draw between Forrest and Everton helped. So the table looks a lot better, but I'm certainly not thinking we're safe yet. No, I mean, we're still in the bottom three at the moment, aren't you? Uh yeah, Correct second if I'm wrong, but I've, I want to say there's maybe only six points covering eight teams now. I think. Oh, it's mad. I think like anyone. It's crazy down. close. Yeah, madness. Yeah, there's eight teams involved in this at the moment. I think there's a few. I know, I know Palace people talking Palace getting dragged in, but once they get beyond these next few, their running's really strong with yeah. good home fixtures as well. And I think they'll probably have too much. I think in the running, but um, I want to say they're the only teams not won in the league uh, in 2023, I think, so far. They've certainly not won since the turn of the year. I know that. Talk to me in in summary, Matt, about Nathan Jones and <laughs> Do what happens. And, <sighs> well, yeah. Yeah. Who's who's to blame? Was he, was um, he just out of his depth? Yeah. And why did the club appoint him? I think the, the club were clearly... At board level, um, Ankerson 
saw Jones as an opportunity um, and a manager that could grow, I think, in the Premier League. And he came out in the fans' forum and obviously tried to back him. But I think from the off coming after the, the World Cup break, it was so clear he hadn't particularly worked with the squad um, in the way that we thought he would have. Didn't really implement what we thought he was going to bring to us, you know, with this, this attack in football, playing with width. It didn't really work, and he was making change after change. Obviously, the crowd were on his back. The players didn't look like they were playing from at all. And I think there's been a couple of videos going around about, you know, his Swansea days and whatnot. Um, and the fact that even then, uh, was it Ashley Williams did an interview and said that he was he was in the dressing room at Stoke um, and basically said to the players, oh, well, you play how you want to play. I don't need to tell you how to play. You're good players. That, that's not what a manager should be doing. Um, and I think that was quite clear. He was out of his depth, even when he came out, you know, in press conferences with some ridiculous state. Stuff. Yeah, very, very bizarre, ridiculous statements. Nothing changed. Um, and he said, all right, that's it. I'm going to play my way. Came out the next game or even worse. So, um, yeah, ah, seven games too late, in my opinion. Happy with Sellers that he's going to do to the end of the season? Yeah, obviously the, the, the March, um, oh, March news was... Not unexpected. Apparently, we tracked him for a long time, but obviously, it's always a risk. Um, he would have had to come in, learn the players, work with a with a new squad. Six months, obviously, just wasn't enough for him to to take on that risk. Ruben's been with the club since Harsen Hootel. Um, the players really respect him. He understands the philosophy of the club, not only at our level but all the way through to under 18s. Um, and I think that's going to make a a big difference. And you can see that the players want to get behind him. He's inexperienced, which is obviously going to go against us. And we've saw that in the, the Leeds game. Um, the substitutions he made were, were poor. And again, yesterday, he almost put us on the back foot for the last half an hour. But I'm hoping with, with time, he probably learns the best seven or eight core players to, to stick with. Who, who appointed Sellers? Because he came, am I right in saying he came in last summer? Uh, he was with, yeah, with Harsenhul. So was it Hassan Hootel's choice or was he given to Hassan Hootel? I think we, he was given know? I think he was given to Hassan Hootel. Um you, you don't quote me on it, but I'm sure he was because he's he's the club's coach. Um so even when management have gone, Hassan Hootel left, Jones has gone, Sellers has stayed. Um and I think he's very much part of the the club's hierarchy rather than under management. And he's always just been given to to the manager. And I, I think for benefit, he, he's a very good coach and a very good man manager. Everybody you speak to through the athletics say, you know, he's a brilliant man to, to work with both on and off the pitch. What's the club's thought process in terms of how they feel towards Rasmus Ankers and that? It's difficult. I think a lot of questions were asked of him at the fans forum. Um, and I listened back to the recording and obviously the, the right questions were asked about Joan's appointment. Perhaps... I don't think we'd be in this position. We probably still would have Ralph at the helm had we been backed last summer in the same way that we were backed in January because they took a huge risk last summer bringing in youth. And that was obviously the, the philosophy they took and the approach that they took. But we've seen, you know, Bazunu, Iduzi, Larios. The, the only real regular has been Lavia, who's been, you know, exceptional. Bazunu, he's probably better than what we've got, but he's still risky and you can tell he gets very nervous. The others, you know, they're nowhere to be seen. Aduzi's playing with the B team at the moment just for a bit of confidence. But had we then brought in, you know, the likes of Alcaraz, uh, another forward and another wide player like we did in January, could have been a different season, but it's the approach they chose to take. Keen to ask about uh, Ankerson, who, for those who don't know, is Southampton's director of football, because he was with you, Tom. He was indeed. He's someone yep. you should know very well. Yeah. Um, how involved was he with the success story of Brentford? Yeah, very. I mean, uh, obviously, uh, he was co-director of football with Phil Giles, who obviously is still at Brentford. And between the two of them, um, are basically, I'd say, a lot, a lot of to down a down of it, a lot to do with the success of what we've done over the last six, seven years is down to those two people, to be honest. So. Um, obviously from the running of the club and just generally bringing in the right players at the right time. Uh, it's interesting what Matt said about bringing in youth, because I mean, that's what we do to be honest. And it's, I'm not sure if it's something that he's almost trying to do at Southampton, but failing to do in the right way. Cause he's almost like 
trying to steamroller into almost what he used to do rather than looking at the, a, a different club with different philosophies if that makes sense so whether he's trying to sort of do a little bit of that and it not quite working out at the moment um because I know that's something that we we do a lot of obviously bringing in, in younger players um to then to obviously develop them and then sell them on for lots of money so um yeah I mean I thought he was brilliant at Brentford and, and he always came out and said the right things at the right times and obviously because we're successful there was no really really questions asked about him um since he joined so between him and and Phil Giles like there's there's we've never actually had to ask any questions because they've never really looked at it and gone mm, that's not good I think maybe the only time really is when obviously um Dean Smith left and obviously we appointed Thomas Frank and in the first 12 games I think he lost the first 10 of them it was patience the first... wasn't there we've spoken about <laughs> yeah. this before the mm-hmm. underlying data suggested the wins were coming and yeah exactly absolutely and they um, did so yeah and and apart from that sort of time then I Apart from that, we've been pretty successful, really. So we've never really had a question to... to, uh, to I, I think it, Giles is still with the club, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he runs... He's director of football there. Why did Ankerson leave? No idea, really. Um, but yeah, I, to be honest, yeah, no idea at all. It's sort of uh, still a bit of a weird one. I'm not sure it's something to do with... I assume, obviously, he's, he was... I think he's part owner of the new company that's taken over Southampton. Sport Republic, yeah. Yeah, he's got like... I think he's like quite a high up figure in that already yep. so whether because it's his own business almost so you'd say that uh it, it was in that like made sense for him to go across there because obviously you know i guess if if you're if you own one club and you're working for another one then it doesn't really uh doesn't really work does it so um but i, I assume it's to do that and, uh, but the real reason is not sure yeah i think it, that's probably an s what it was it, it's part owner of southampton right matt yeah essentially um, it's not the only link between the two clubs. You've already alluded it to it, Matt. You two both play with B teams. Yep. And I guess this is a large influence from Ankerson. I take it this is new for you, Matt. Yeah, it's kind of been obviously the the under twenty ones and then the under eighteen setup, and yeah, it's more become the, the the B team. And through, I guess, no fault of say Jones. And then obviously sellers now we're seeing a lot more first team squad players playing with the B team, but that's because we have 31 registered squad team. Um, we're, we're, we have far too many players that probably should have moved on and haven't. Um, and it's meant that, you know, you've got four or five center backs buying for two spots, similarly with the midfielders and, you know, the, the likes of Orsic, for instance, have come in really struggled um, to kind of get on with the way that we play, both whether it's management from Jones's area, but even, you know, when, when Sellers has come in, we've still seen Chiletta Sar and Orsic not get back into first-team football. They're playing with the B team. So I think, yeah, we're going to see that a lot more in terms of the B team being used to get players into fitness as well as probably get, give a bit of experience to, to the younger players, the likes of Don Ballard, um, who are playing very well. And I think if we go down... Dom's probably got quite a bright future with us and will more likely get very regular starts in the championship. It's Tom, is this B team model? Is you keeping it or are you going to move away from it now? Have you heard um, anything? Yes, a bit well. I uh, know they'll they'll keep it, but um they have to well, they are introduced in an academy now. Um again, which is starting again from next season, I believe. But the reason obviously we did it is we've had players, I think it all started from a player a while must be like seven or eight years ago. And I think he finished his contract at 16 and then was picked up by, I think it was Chelsea for basically no money at all. So the idea of it is basically we were developing all these young players and then basically they're being bought by bigger clubs, uh, being sort of West London as well. You know, you've at the time you obviously had teams like well, obviously Chelsea around the corner, Fulham, um, Arsenal, Tottenham, you, all these like what we could say are basically bigger clubs, maybe not Fulham, but um <laughs> uh, but obviously yeah, you're digging around. ahead of absolutely had game. to be done didn't it yeah absolutely <laughs> um, but there's this big clubs picking up players for no money at all that we basically developed from the age of sort of like 10 um, so basically the idea was that we would we almost did it opposite so the B team works as we pick up players who are left are like you know if Chelsea doesn't extend their contract to 16 years old and go you know sorry we don't think you're good enough they come and join us um, and we've had obviously huge amount of success from players coming through the B team and playing for the first team now. Um, they are interested in the academy from next year. Uh, I think it's because they've got to. Because they've got to, basically. I don't think yeah, they it's want under to. Premier League rules, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So um, it's not 
like uh, I don't think it's particularly it wasn't like saying they were you know oh we really need to do this but now it's something they have to do uh, rather than want to so but I think obviously they'll do it the right way and they'll invest the money in it but the B team I think is I mean it's really successful for us as you've seen we've got players playing this year who have who've come through the B team so um, yeah it's, it's I, I think it works well people may be more familiar with it now because one of Beckham's sons <laughs> Joy, joy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Romeo Dunn. Um, what, what's your thought, take on that as a fan? Um, fine. Um, I thought it's a bit, it's a bit depressing when you like. So we obviously just signed. Well, at the same time, I think it was like the day before we just signed Kevin Sharday for like, well, on loan to buy at the end of the season, and it was like he will become our most expensive signing of all time. And all you see in the newspapers is like, oh, Romeo Beckham's joined Brentford, and it's like. It, I, it's sort of like I don't really care. Like I, I to honest, I mean, if you look at Romeo Beckham's Instagram page, he's got ten times the amount of followers that Brentford have on Instagram. So you know why they've done it. Um, it does make sense, and and it brings it, it, it brings us into the spotlight. I can't see it as a bad thing. So, um, yeah, and he's not playing. He's not playing in the first team, and apparently he's playing quite well for the B team. And it's only on loan, and just to keep himself fit, I think. Apparently, so hey, who yeah, knows? He could. Uh... We could have a we could have a Beckham at, uh, in the Brentford first team. So. It's probably good for him and his fitness, gets his name out in the domain of English football. And uh, it's good for you for reasons that you've you've just explained, right? Makes yeah. people aware of Brentford, who particularly perhaps in America might not have been aware of, for yeah, example. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Since we last spoke, Tom, um, yeah. you've only played once. Um, <laughs> yeah. do you, you feel like you probably haven't played for weeks on end, I should imagine. It, it's, it's been a while, hasn't it? It's been a while. So. Is that positive um, or not? Yeah. Uh... I don't know. We're not in any cup competitions or anything at the moment. So it's sort of like having that week off, you sort of, it it does always seem nicer when, especially on the run we're on at the moment, you know, keep having game week in, week out. It's not a bad thing. Um, You know, we're still unbeaten in what? 12 now, is it? 11, 12, 13. You very nearly, you very nearly lost that to Palace though. No, it was always in hand, wasn't it? So, of course, mate. Yeah, yeah. Abs- abs- <laughs> absolutely. Right, let me get to the questions, Tom, that people want to know most. Um, you're obviously playing Fulham on Monday night. Yeah. Um, your, your rivalry, you don't like each other. Every time I speak to Dari, he gets in a dig about you as well. I'll have to get you two on the pod <laughs> together at some point. Yeah, yeah. Um, what minute will Tony get booked? Um, I'm going to go with like maybe after the final whistle. Just to really rub it, and everyone thinks they're safe, and then he'll like. You won't even know and... till Tuesday. Yeah, he'll go. He'll go like <laughs> kick, the, kick the referee or something. So, um, yeah, I, th- I think. Well, I, I, I'm sure he'll get, probably get sent off just for the just for the fun of it, won't he? So, why does he get so many bookings? I, I so I think from when you watch this, sort of, we do press quite high up the field, and I think he's just such a bad defender that he pushes up the field, tries to put a toe in to win the ball back, and just ends up kicking the player and getting a yellow. And it always seemed quite late on. He does like to um, have a bit of a moan and whine at the referee as well. Which I think he likes think. he likes a confrontation, doesn't he? I've, I've, I does bet a, a few are confrontational. Oh, I mean, there's bookings. there's definitely ones where he just runs up to the referee, just shouting at the ref for like no reason. So yeah, there's a few stupid ones in there. Um, I'm sure we will see that ninth yellow card to uh, Monday. To it's written, so. in, written oh, in the stars, I should imagine. So yeah. that's one of two ways that he can get a ban. He's on eight yellows at the moment. If he hits ten, he obviously gets a two game ban. When that if that tenth yellow comes before Brentford's thirty second match, um, also we've obviously had developments in the last week that yeah. we believe Tony has accepted the, the majority the joy, of charges. The However, joy of the Tom, Daily Mail. Um, it is true. Sorry, yeah. Um, is it? Oh, well, I mean, did you see his Instagram post the other day? Well, I did. Um, that's why I'm asking. Uh, yeah, so I mean, it's just like it's just it's just it's really frustrating because it's sort of like it's almost like. So it, it came out pre, um, obviously, international or World Cup at the start. And it's and now it's come out again just before the England call-ups. And it's almost like there's someone at the Daily Mail who just really doesn't want England to sign up Ivan Tony. So to honest, at this point, I hope he, I hope he um, plays. I think because I think he can play for Jamaica as well. So anyway, let's let's hope he goes play for them instead. So um, He didn't come on in either of the Nations League games, did he? When nope. he was in the squad. Nope. So... It's just really frustrating for me because it's like he definitely deserves a call up, and it's almost like they're bringing it out just so he doesn't get called up. And um, yeah, and then all that happens is you just get like the amount of like the amount of messages you see like underneath. Then like, oh, he should, be, you know, they should be he should be banned already. He should be suspended from playing until they've come to a conclusion. It's like, oh my god, shut up! Just like I mean, we know we know what Twitter's like anyway, but it's. Uh, I, it's, I imagine, it's... in all honesty, Gareth Southgate's probably been told he can't pick him. 
And I think oh, that's yeah, probably so. the case for the World Cup as well. Probably. We'll probably never know if Southgate really wanted to to use him or not, actually. Um, yeah. And I imagine, surely you'd want him in the squad. It's just I, I think ideal so. backup for Harry yeah, Kane, to be exactly. totally honest. So, yeah, look, I think you know, Touchwood on the other side of it, he'll get involved and, and play for England. Have you heard anything? No, no, on a I mean, timeline perspective, no. Well, I think it, uh, the, I think the good thing that happened when obviously Tony posted on Instagram the other day, saying that it was meant to be private and confidential, and it, none of this should have come out, is actually quite like good to hear from that side because the fact we've not heard anything about it apart from these leaks that have come out means that okay they're doing it in sort of a way. Um, but apart from that, like what I what I what everyone else sees, no, I've not heard anything. So, um, yeah, there's obviously now talk of a six month ban. But even he said on Instagram, it's like, well, there's not even been a trial for it yet. So I don't know what everyone's talking about sort of thing. So, yeah, who knows? Hopefully sooner rather than later. And hopefully it's a time period. And what if he gets banned in the next sort of... Let's hope, Tom, let's hope it... every FPL manager just went, no, what do you mean soon, Tom? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, I mean, he'd get banned. He'd get banned, like, what, first week of April? Give him six months, be back by October. It'd be lovely. So you can have the summer we, off. We spoke about this with you a few weeks ago. That actually, yeah, it probably would be the ideal scenario for Brentford just to get it done now. Yeah, absolutely. You're safe, clearly. It would be amazing if you qualified for Europe, but not the priority. No. You've already had a brilliant season to get him back rather than it drags into August, September. Then you lose him for six months. He's effectively out of your next season. Yeah. Problem. More um, so. Yeah, so I can certainly understand why you want to get it done. I'd say, to give my neutral opinion at this stage, it doesn't sound to me like the decision is going to be imminent. And that's... No, it seems like it's going to be, yeah, still many weeks down the line sort of thing. So, yeah, the fact that, obviously, uh, according to the leaks, he's still contesting a few of the charges as well and bits and pieces. So, I mean, like like we've all just said, who knows? Who It could, what, we have no idea. I, I assume he obviously 100% went in on that wild card. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. First first name on the team sheet. So, yeah, he's uh, in. I take it he went in for you as well, Matt. Certainly did. Uh, Tom, what scenario do you not captain him this coming week? Uh, if he gets sent off against Fulham. But then to be oh, fair, so. to be fair, I could just captain him anyway and then just put the put the vice captain on someone else. <laughs> but uh, just uh, to say you still did it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Housery on the bench. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he will be my captain this week. Um, if he does happen to something crazy happens, then Thomas, I'll probably just drop into Mbomo and Captain Mbomo instead. So, do you still go and have a Brentford plan? I would, yeah, yeah. I mean, if I could, I could not, could I? No, I, I, I completely respect your. I, I, yeah, Matt's going to tell us which Southampton player is going to captain in a bit. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm absolutely certain. Um, but do you have any doubt about it? if he if he gets booked? against Fulham I probably still would to be honest it's probably my take as well I think like I mean yeah fine if he, it's one of those it's like it's like captaincy this week so I could have picked Haaland I could have picked uh, Saka I picked Saka and it's like I, I, I told us I really dislike captaincy anyway so just stick it on Tony and just hope for the best and enjoy it so um, or not enjoy it which will more than likely be the uh, the outcome uh, so, Matt yeah. is he is he likely to get it from yourself yeah 100% no no fault for them Brighton players no, I, I just think Brentford's double is, you know, it's too good to turn down, particularly for Tony. Marcus Rashford plays you as well, Matt. I yeah, realize he didn't have a good day today. But... We, we, we've just seen what happened about that, and we'll come on to that later. So. Yeah, they might, they, <laughs> they might take their anger out on you, mate. <laughs> uh, they've got rail betters first, it's fine. That's true. <laughs> so you'll go Tony as well? Yeah. Yeah, I... I think it'll be me. I think, yeah, even if he's on the nine nine yellows, I think he's he's the best choice. He's yeah. going to be in the majority of teams. That's only going to grow this week with more wild carders and more transfers. He's surely going to be a big target. If he obviously scores against Fulham, that'll help as well. But yeah. Okay, yeah, he scored. Okay, now he's got a double as well. Would definitely help. Do you think he'll be the most captain player? Is that this obvious week, this week? Um, I don't know. I, no, I don't know, to be honest. I think on the little bubble that is Twitter, he probably will be, but in the real world, I don't think he will be so much. So, because there are people who still look at it and go, well, I'm not going to captain a Brentford player, am I? So, wait, we'll captain Watford players last yeah. time. <laughs> like, so, oh, yeah, yeah, it's a feeling like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, wasn't Emmanuel Dennis like 125% EO or something like that? <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. I imagine Tony, yeah, I expect high. him to be the most captain. I think there's a few 
if he gets booked against Fulham, I think the, the Brighton attacking players are performing well enough that that's still so tempting, whether it's mm. McAllister, Marshall, Midtime, or whatever your preference. And Rashford has mentioned, Matt, I'm not joking about it, but his streak at Old Trafford is phenomenal, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's another it's another team where you've you've suffered against in the past, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not I'm not I'm not using numbers. Yeah, good. <laughs> yeah, when was, when it was... got to seven, I looked at the clock today and I, I was thinking so did, I. <laughs> so did I. And I saw Lucy <laughs> tweeted about it as well. It was yeah, quite amusing. But yeah, we, we had um, you know, different circumstances in that game where we, where we went there and got absolutely annihilated. But yeah, I, I, Rashford will still dominate us in, in spite of the fact that they look woeful today against Liverpool after they won one nil down and capitulated. They, they won't do that against Southampton. Okay. We'll come back on some of your assets, because I mean, particularly for free hitters. And, and I'm sure yeah. there will be a few. There's definitely some discussion points to be had. Um, plus we're all looking for a goalkeeper at the moment uh, that we may come back onto, but I just want to focus on Brentford first, Matt, mm. um, what Brentford players did you go with on World Card last week? Uh, Tony and Henry. That's what I went with. Tom is nodding. I take it you must have gone with three, mate. Yeah, Raya as well. To add to those two, so Henry and and Tony for me as well. So I might as well do it now. We've got this Sanchez problem. Many of us. Is he is he just go and buy him, Tom? I mean, if if, if you if you haven't gone with free Brentford already. Yeah, I mean, like obviously he's an absolute points machine. I mean, what we conceded against. I think it was Palace. He got six. He got a six pointer. Um, what is a one all goal uh, game? He conceded, and he still got six points. So, you just we we seem to allow just so many shots outside of the box where he just picks up those little odd save points here and there. It means he just racks up bonus points as well when it's a low scoring game. We don't go out and beat teams apart from Man United four 0 So we usually like one or two. So if we are winning games at the moment, so it's not like. There's loads of goals behind that as, as well for like bonus points. So he just seems to pick them up most constantly. So yeah, definitely, definitely a good pick. Uh, Matt, did you go Sanchez as well? Yeah. Are, are you planning to make this move? Yeah. I haven't decided yeah. yet. Yeah, I, I've seen a few talking about going to steal, but I think that's too big of a risk. Yeah, I agree. Uh, the, the the worry will be obviously if 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 we go Raya and then Sanchez gets his place back. But the Zerbi's comments make me think that. He's not going to bring Steele back in for one game. He gets a clean sheet, you know, by all accounts, plays pretty well, praised by the manager. He's then surely not going to be dropped immediately the following week. Um, I think the Brighton fans have said that he's been playing pretty well in the cup games. So, yeah, I expect him to get at least a little run before maybe he makes a, a howler. So for me, yeah, Sanchez to, to Ray is probably a no-brainer. It just means that it frees up that, that Brighton spot and whether I... I want to take a minus four to then bring in another Brighton mid to, to have the double up rather than relying on one. I'm fairly sure I know why you pick Sanchez. It's got to be the same reason I pick Sanchez going, I can bench him in 28 when Brighton yeah. haven't got the fixture. So I can have three Brighton and I can still keep hold of a Rashford yep. on value um, exactly. and bench for 28. Because otherwise, if it was just a straight choice, I would never have picked Sanchez no. over Raya. And no. it's weird how these, these quirks get you. You think, well, I can... I can knock an extra fixture out there. It's not a problem. Exactly that. You go and get Ray, and I go, I've only got two Brighton. I want to get another one. And then right. it actually gives me the problem, which is why I went with Sanchez in the first place. We've only got 10 players for game with 28. Yep. Doesn't I blame make sense. It. Blame so, our team for that. I mean, we'll, I think we'll ask Sam when he's on Thursday's clash of correspondence. Like, is there scope to go Bright Brighton player minus four one game week here? Yeah. When so many players have good fixtures this week, even from the single game week, because, um, very, very interesting. Um, Tom Raya wouldn't suddenly get dropped for star co shows <laughs> uh, or anything like no, that, would he? No, no, like, no. Tom, yeah. you know, the ship we can't foresee. I know he's injured at the moment as well, isn't he? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so no, I don't think he, yeah, we won't see that anytime soon. So, unless he gets sent off against Fulham. So, Raya Henry Tony yep. seems to be near enough where we would have all wanted to land if we'd gone free Brentford. Is that definitely the right free for you, Tom? Like, if someone's asking yeah. now, free hit this week, is that the free? I mean, the amount of times this week I've been asked, Pinnock, me or Henry, <laughs> honest to God, like I'd wanted to at one point snap my phone in half. So um, yeah, what you do like, is you reply to one, right? You Then you bookmark your reply yeah. and you just copy tweet it. I did that a few times. Yeah, it was uh, yeah. it was it was quite constant. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can literally flip a coin if you have a three sided coin, if that's possible between all three of them. It doesn't really matter. Um, 
people are saying, oh, is Pinnock now in rotation because Pontus Janssen's back fit? It's like, well, Pontus Janssen's our fourth choice centre back. So, no. <laughs> like, um, Who's third choice? Ajay. Ajay, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, and he's not playing any games. Uh, Pinnock's played every single minute since he's been fit since game week nine. So, yeah, he might get, I mean, it can happen with any centre back that we might have a game where they go, oh, you know what, I'm going to think about putting someone else in. But we also play five at the back. So when we've got a five back, Pontus could come into a five back. It's like he will get game time from that point of view. So, yeah, um, any three of those defenders you could have pick, you could pick. Um, obviously, Tony up front just makes sense. Um, why why yeah. did you go Henry? What over Pinnock? Yeah. Um, I just, I do prefer having a fullback, and I think he's been getting in the right positions this year. Like obviously, he should have scored against Arsenal. Um, he is finding better final balls. He's still not quite there. Um, and I was listening to, uh, it was like a BBC podcast the other day and Thomas Frank was on it and he was just like, just heaping on praise on on Henry. And it's just like, and saying that basically, you know, defensively he's fantastic now, but going forward, he's getting better and better. And it's just like, well, I'd rather have that player than, you know, Pinnock and me, for, I know me scored three goals a season, but when you look at that over the course of the season, it's like it's not common that a centre back gets a goal. So I'd rather go with a, a wing, a wing back that goes so high up the pitch and is in that position much more than than the centre back. So is he any cool. rotation risk at all? No. The only player that can play left back, in my opinion, well, there'd, there'd be two. One would be Vitali Yano, and we haven't seen that at all this year. Um, and the other one would be Aaron Hickey. But obviously Hickey's still trying to fight for his position over Roslo. So there's no way I can see Henry getting dropped for the, for either of the, anyone at the moment. So especially the way he's playing. So no. Uh, have you planned ahead, Matt, what you want to do with Brentford players going forward in future weeks once we hit sort of 29 and, and beyond? Yeah, I think the only one I've looked at potentially moving on was obviously Tony, just, just because of the risk there. And I think his value allows you to move quite easily sideways to, to another forward of that value. You know, the likes of Watkins, Iheanacho. But for us, kind of outside of that, I'd, I'd probably keep Raya and Henry to start with um, and ju- just see where we go. I think I've got a, a reasonably deep enough squad to to deal with that. Yeah, Ray is certainly capable. Although I think it's, it's fair to say, Tom, that after this double and the Leicester fixture 28, mm-hmm. he, he does... We've spoken about this a few times. Those last couple of months are tough, aren't they? Uh, they're not the nicest, but... Um, <laughs> it looks yeah, worse I mean, now the Man United fixture's gone in there as well. Yeah, but I mean, to be fair, I mean, we've picked up really good results against all of the big teams this year. So I don't even really fear owning them anymore, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like you go, oh, you know, they've got a bad fixture, but they've actually proven this year they seem to they seem to be, seem to be worse in the, in the worst fixtures this year. They seem to be... Like they just go to another level again, sort of like your Man Cities and your Chelsea's and, and the big teams. So I know that feeling. I mean, look, you could certainly bench the likes of Raya, uh, Henry, Pinnock. I think that was one of the key factors for me and yeah. not Ben yeah. Me as well as a thing. That's a lot. When I look, if he ends up staying for the whole season, that's a little bit more than what I'd like to play for a player who's probably going to sit on the bench a lot. Because yeah. even the fixtures that look all right beyond the 29 double, Villa is in 32. That's you free hit territory for a lot of people. <laughs> 34, you've got Forrest at home. It's going to be doubles for other teams. Yeah. So he's probably going to sit on the bench. The only other one is West Ham at home, 36. Otherwise, don't think you'd ever start him. And that, mm. that was that was a key decision for me in terms of not paying the extra for, for Ben Mee, who's I think absolutely 100%. But yeah, I think as what you said, Pinnock owners should be all right here, shouldn't they? Yeah, and I would. owners. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's just like people saying like, well, you know, yeah, just just save the money. It doesn't you don't need to have spend the extra money on Ben Me because everyone's saying, oh, he scored more goals than Pinnock this year. And if you look at their sort of like what they, their actual involvement in the game, basically Me's out, outperformed it and Pinnock's underperformed it. But they're basically exactly exact, that. it's exactly the same. Like the 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 actual numbers are identical. I think actually Pinnock's is better um, than than uh, Me's. Is it any other Brentford players worth considering, Tom? Um, and Bumo, I guess, is... Yeah, and Bumo's obviously interesting, but the problem is he's a forward, isn't it? So if Tony was to get banned or, or um, from bookings or from betting scandals, who knows? Uh, and Bumo's obviously really interesting because he'll play 
up there. <laughs> it would have to be a wait and see, but then that would actually make Kevin Sharday really interesting if Tony was to get banned. It's a shame, really, you know, if he does, because obviously we bought him for a reason. We bought him to be a striker. And he's a five million midfielder who's playing as a striker. So that would be, that'd be really interesting. But obviously at the moment, it's just, you can't even look at that. Um, only other ones, maybe Matthias Jensen. He is playing really well. His numbers aren't great though, but he, it's like, he's a similar price to sort of your Matomas, your Marches and your McAllisters. So I don't think you'd really go there either because I think he's, no. he's five mil. So not really. I think you defenders and, and your two attackers really your main ones okay how many Southampton players did you go Tom none unfortunately that's a bit rude isn't it it's, Matt I did, how, yeah, how many none <laughs> <laughs> okay was it straightforward was there anyone was close for you no I don't think I've seen a Southampton player in a wild card I, uh, think. I think I've seen one or two JWP yeah. talking about maybe there's a couple of lads of slack though was he close for you, JWP? No. No, not for me. Any thoughts now? No. Like if you no. had a midfielder got injured right now, you're in the double. Still wouldn't touch him. Mate, I, I think particularly he's going to be, if we're going to stick with the same formation and if Alcaraz is fit, perhaps he's going to sit. Is one, yeah, deeper. So you're on the opportunities, free kicks and pens. And I mean, he's missed both his pens this season. Well, yeah, so. Do you think he'll still be on him? I think he probably will. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, obviously missed missed one. Uh, I can't remember the game week, but then scored the rebound and obviously missed against Leicester. And then he came out in Sky afterwards and said he'd prefer a free kick. And we all know that. So that's mad, isn't it? He'd prefer a free kick on the edge yeah. of the box than a penalty. That's, I mean, to, to be honest, that in itself would make me want to have a different penalty taker. Although Tell me he's about it. <laughs> the best striker of a dead ball in the league, and I don't, I don't think there's there's too much argument about that actually. Um, yeah, when we last spoke, and obviously going into that Everton fixture, he played as a 10 and yeah. scored twice. Yep. And then it was like, oh, we need to watch this carefully. But actually now, if Alcaraz has passed fit at 5 million, that's that's more interesting, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. And I mean, Sellers came out and said that Prowse, albeit was a benefit to the team in the, in the 10, he's more important to him in that holding role. Um, and I think that, that that's true. You know, he can pick a pass. He's... His, his composure works incredibly well alongside Lavia, and and that was you know for all to see um, midweek. So yeah, I think we we probably stay away from Prowse unless you really want to take a punt. But I wouldn't. Have you considered Bazuno for your Sanchez problem? No. Nah. Safe in goal? Any risk? Because McCarthy's back fit, isn't he? Yeah, but obviously McCarthy's back fit. We've got Caballero. I just don't think they want to drop him because I think if they do drop him, he's done. That, that'll be him for the season. Um, he makes howlers. And I mean, he made another one, um, basically put it on a plate for Ian Archer, should have scored. But I think everybody in the squad are behind him because there are certain games where he makes exceptional saves, um, keeps us in it. But then there are other games where some of his decision-making is, is quite irrational. But I think that's hopefully going to change, you know, with experience. Um, we obviously saw with, with Leeds, with Meslier, um, again, another young keeper. I think he's grown um, in composure, and I'm hoping that Bazunu can do the same. If you were free hitting this week, do you think you'd have any Saints? I think the only one you'd probably want to put in there if you were free hitting would be Prowsey. I, I don't, I can't see us keeping a clean sheet in either of the double games. So, um, yeah, the only one I'd risk is Prowsey because you don't really know who's going to start in the other positions, in all honesty. Yeah, I, I'm looking at like Jan Bednarek 4.2. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> when I said I was looking, I, I mean, I was only looking through the list of players. I'm not looking yeah. and thinking of buying. Fucking Just Yanny wouldn't, me. would you? No. I don't even think you'd want to stick that on the bench, would you? As, no. I um, shouldn't be starting, so. Well, I, that was going to be the follow-up question as part why I mentioned him as well. And you don't think you should be in the team, do you? No, I can't stand him. Um, what is it about him? It's just... He blames everybody on the pitch. Um, and obviously his comments when he went to Villa caused a lot of sour taste in Saints fans saying, oh, he's gone to a better club and a bigger club. Um, and yada, yada, yada. Suddenly uh, comes crawling back in January after basically playing no minutes for Villa. Um, Jones throws him straight back into the team for you know his experience. 
he's had three howlers that have led to three goals. Um, I mean, in my opinion, it was his issue um, against Leeds. Bazunu didn't cover himself, you know, in a credit either, but Benarek just stands there. So I'm hoping that Salisu is slowly coming back to fitness. Um, I mean, he was on the bench against Leicester. So preferably I'd like to see Salisu and Bella Koch up alongside one another. I just don't, don't think Bednarak is Premier League quality. Okay, so what should the back four be, in your opinion? Uh, Walker Peters, Bella Kotchup, Salisu, Perro. So Walker Peters at right back. So Walker yep. Peters played at left back at the he weekend. Did, yeah. Ainsley Maitland Niles played all the games under Sellers yeah, so just... far at right back. Yeah. Thoughts? Um, it's been interesting. He he had a very good game against Chelsea. Um, he was woeful against Leeds. And I think he played okay against Leicester. But when you've got Walker Peters, um, I think he, he should be playing right back. And Perot is such an attacking fullback that I think it almost takes away a little bit from Walker Peters when you've got Maitland-Niles on the other side. Um, whereas when he's on the right, Perot going forward on the left is, yeah, he, he's unbelievable at times. And I think he's probably been one of our standout players in, in a woeful season. So... I'd very much like to see that back four and Maitland Knowles. Yeah, he's he's there as cover, you know, when, when games come thick and fast, sure. And we might see Walker Peters and Maitland Knowles one game and then Walker Peters and Perot the next, potentially. Um, I think it's come out that the club have got, you know, the captaincy is Prousey, but they've now got three or four senior players in the background that are almost like vice captains. And Walker Peters is one of those. And he took the armband. Um against Grimsby um obviously we, we don't really want to go into that but uh yeah he, he he's quite clear that I, I think don't want to go into the cup no, last week no exactly <laughs> yeah I know <laughs> I don't so, want to talk about the weekend <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and I mean the Tottenham I, side of it not the FPL well, side well that's true but yeah I, I think that back four is our strongest back four but we'll probably see rotation I think if I was free hitting I would strongly consider Che Adams this week and part of the thinking behind that is uh, Tony would be an obvious, um, but if you want to go with two defensive Brentford, and I think that might be the way to go if you were free hit in this week, because I think there's more going to have that than the combination of uh, Tony and Mbumo, for example. There's every chance you wouldn't pick a forward from Brian, and he definitely couldn't pick Edward or Mateta at the moment. Wilfred Zaha played OOP at the weekend. So if you went a forward who's got a double, it's the only other option. He's yeah, Trey the, Adams. The only risk is obviously it's it's him and Onoachu, and I think Adams is there for experience. Sellers touched on that. I honestly think the reason that Onoachu didn't play is because they had Suter obviously at the back, and you know his height kind of doesn't mean anything when, when he's got him there um, and as a an opposing centre back. I think Adams played a very good role in holding the ball up. I still think preference would probably be that we're trying to get balls into the box for Onoachu, particularly, you know, as, as we go into, say, the United game, I can see Onoachu playing over over Che, potentially. Have they played together yet? No. I wonder if that would maybe be an option if um, if Alcaraz is not fit. Yeah, if if we went, I think it may suit for 2-2-2 two, two, two more if we went down that route, whereas preference I think amongst fans and I think it gets the best out of the team is the 4-2-3-1 I just can't see Adams playing in that 10 role you're, you're more likely to see Armstrong or Ali Nusi, albeit I don't particularly rate him and fans didn't but a lot of fans booed him when he came on I thought that was completely you know who got booed? Ali Nusi got booed harsh, when he came on yeah I thought it was incredibly harsh what's behind that? he's had some poor games um but he's been consistently in the 11. And I mean, that, that's not his fault. That's that's the managers that are selecting him. We, we shouldn't be booing our own when, when they come onto the field. But you know, obviously, Bednarak gets booed when his name um, gets called out amongst the, the starting lineup at the start from a selection like that of That sort of stuff and, needs been in at the moment, yeah. right? Your situation is it. too important. Yep. Yeah. Uh, that's, a, that's a shame to hear that. Elianusi, um, admittedly amongst 10 other Southampton players, was absolutely outstanding at White Hart Lane. Yep. Last January, when you when you beat us, he was. was so good, um, and not really kicked on. It's it's mad when when you look at your squad of midfielders, even just looking at the FPL website, like bloody hell, there's a lot of players there. Ex yeah. like exactly what you said. 
Yeah. And a lot of them aren't getting a look in. So if it was 4 2 3 1 going forward, and obviously Lavi or Ward Prowse would, would be your two. Yep. Who who would be your preferred three in front of that? Um, I'd probably like to see Onoachu, uh, Sulemana, and it, it's tricky, I guess it depends on which we go, but I, I still rate Stuart Armstrong. Um, I think he's one of the more composed players. If we were going to go for games, I'd like to see a doozy um, play in that role. But it, it really varies. Like Walcott, for instance, got given an opportunity against Leicester. And I thought it was his best game this season for us. Um, he looks like he's the he's one of the players on the pitch that really cares about the state of the club at the moment. And obviously, you know, born and bred kind of through the Southampton Academy and moved on. And he's come back. I think we're going to need that. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see Walcott start again um, against Brentford. I'm not going to tell anyone that he's 4.8. No. But I, but I just did, just, yeah. just for the sake of it. Do you... <laughs> Shut up, Sub. Um, do you think you'll stay up, Matt? <sighs> no, I still don't think we will. Um, the fixtures between now and the end of the season aren't the best, albeit we do still obviously play West Ham, Bournemouth, Palace. We've got games against teams around us. But those are the games that have let us down this season. Whereas, you know, the, for instance, the three games under Sellers, I expected us to pick up three points out of the three, and that was against Leeds. We, we've picked up six, and it's against the two teams I thought we'd lose to. So I think we need five wins um, minimum. And it's tricky to see where they're coming from, but if if Sellers can really get them as a, a close-knit group and go for games when when we can go for them and potentially pick up the odd point against some of the, the bigger teams, then potentially. Our only hope is the fact that the league is shit this season and there are probably eight teams that deserve to go down. So that's that's our only saving grace. I can tell you one of those probable wins because I booked some train tickets. It's the only game I'm going to miss. I'm so annoyed because oh, I know I'm at a wedding that weekend. So it's frustrating. Um, yeah, I mean, if my run of away games is anything to go by, that would be one of them, Matt, I should imagine. You might as well just pencil in 1 0 Southampton now. Did you, Matt, did you go Kane on wildcard? Yeah. Did? Yep. Are you intending to catch him in 28? Potentially. I'm, I'm, I'm undecided. Um, it, it probably depends on what I do with Holland because I've got Holland as well. So, if I move Haaland on, then I may well captain whoever I bring in. But Kane is definitely an option. Okay. Uh, Tom, you'll just captain Tony against Leicester, won't you? Yeah, <laughs> Holland, why not? That's if, he's, if he's not banned. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, Tom, just tell us briefly before we finish up. Uh, we joked about this rivalry with Fulham. Um, yeah. Is it is it really a big thing? Mm, um, QPR's bigger. The QPR for rivalry is much bigger, I think. Um it, it, it is what it is, sort of thing. It's not. It's not as big as I think everyone makes it out to be. Um, it's. It's not. It's just more fun to have a bit of a, bit of a go, isn't it? Every so often, but uh, no. The one. The I think the main rivalry is really with QPR. It's just. I mean, Fulham's more so with historically with more with Chelsea, isn't it? Really. So. Um. But yeah, we'll we'll go there and we'll still try and uh, beat them up. So. I'd ask you a logical question like, "What are you going to do with your Brentford assets?" But I don't doubt you'll just keep them all season anyway. So it feels like a, a waste of time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, um, probably. Go on, then, Tom. Predict this game against Fulham tonight. Give us a correct score prediction for people like me who really need Tony to uh, and a clean sheet. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's been I a mean, bad week. Are they still missing? Oh, who's their midfield? Paulinho is suspended. Yeah. Yeah. He's suspended, so is he? Okay, I'll go two 0 to us then. Yeah. All right. I don't. I'm Tony Yellow and Tony, a couple, for, couple Tony, from Boomo. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so Kev, never at all. Kevin he's, Charlie he's, comes up with a brace. He's got to get booked tonight. It feels like a, an FPL certain. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, right, Matt. Manchester United away. Yep. Expectation? Has that, has that Liverpool performance raised your, yeah. your hopes so, for what you could get out of Old Trafford next week? 7-0, no problem. What, to them? <laughs> no, I I think that that Liverpool performance is a one-off. That they're not going to you know come out against us and play that way. I think we could we have the potential to give them a good game, particularly if we set up in the right way. But in the end, I think it will probably end up being comfortable for them. Score prediction: three 0 United. Okay, 
Uh, Tom, you go to Everton. Mm. Prediction? Maybe one, one, just one nil. To yourselves? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think that they're, they're as bad as they've been. Well, they're, they're definitely been better defensively under Deitch, but obviously today was a bit of a bad okay. game for them. But one nil prediction isn't like fueling the the passion for Tony at this stage. So That's... do you want to give it? Do you want to give us a different prediction for the trip to Southampton next week and actually make it worthwhile for us? Oh, fine. Sorry, I'll go like no, fine. I'll say seven nil against Everton. I'll say one nil against Southampton <laughs> then, just so I don't offend Matt. So <laughs> you don't need it. go on, give us a prediction for the game at Southampton. Uh. Two one to yourselves. Yes. Yeah. Not gonna say. Not gonna say it's out to right. That's fine. Right. You lost four one there last year. It we did. Arguably, your, it was arguably your worst. The worst game. Of the season. Well, it was an absolute stinker. We we dropped. So yeah. Um, I think the only worry I've got about the two games is it's the sort of games we've not been doing fantastically in this year. Like obviously Palace last week, we sort of cruising a little bit. It wasn't really like a great performance, and that's my only worry for these two games. As good as they look on paper. I don't want them to rock up and just be a little bit like flat, which they have been in in, in some of some of the games I've seen this year. Uh, Matt, predict that fixture next Wednesday for us. I mean, Brentford ruined us when we went to their place, but we know why. Um, purely on the basis that it's at home. Um, and again, Those who can't do the sarcasm. He's referring <laughs> to Nathan Jones. Okay, and uh, it's under the lights. Uh, I'm going to back as two one. How do you think they'll get on at Everton? I think Brentford will win comfortably. Is that your Tony justification answer? Yeah, Kat, I, I think it, I think they'll probably run it 2-0. Okay. Tom, you have a better goal difference than Manchester United at this moment in time. Yeah. How does that feel? That's not bad, is it? <laughs> I'm a Tottenham fan, that's, so I, will, I award trophies for anything, right? That's, that's not bad at all. Yeah, we'll take that. <laughs> You've lost four games, the same as Man City, one more than Arsenal. Yep. That's it. Remarkable. But you've only won eight. That's why you're not, not yeah. higher in the table, right? Yeah. Too many draws. I don't really care, to be honest. <laughs> no, no, no. It's not a criticism. You've had an incredible season. Four defeats from 23 played is, yeah. is remarkable, actually. I think, I think the, but the one would be, is like, I, I'd be interested to know how many points we've secured from losing positions this year. Because we seem to just, if we go down, we just seem to be, well, I mean, was it 96th minute against Palace last week? There's just a lot of games where we've gone down and we've come back and, and end up winning the game or, or drawing the game this year. And I think that we're we'll, we'll drawing a lot of them, I think, I actually. think that will come down to team spirit a lot. I think yeah, all yeah, neutrals massive. would say you could certainly see that in your team, Tom. Yeah, massively. Yeah, massively. They they sort of, well, yeah. I mean, the the, the things that Frank does when we go down is is a bit, bit mad. So, I mean, well, against Palace, he took off Hickey and Rick O'Henry and bought on a winger and then sent a midfielder. So he went almost like two at the back, which was a, which was interesting. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's been, it's been good. It's been a good, good year. So definitely not complaining. It's, Definitely the first time any correspondents come on here and used in the same sentence, hickey and going down. Uh, so <laughs> where can everyone follow you on the bird app, mate, and plug your podcast? Uh, FPL Dummy Tom. And yeah, we do a podcast every Monday called FPL by Dummies. Good stuff. And Matt, where can everyone follow you, mate? Uh, CS underscore wipeout. Or whinging in the Southampton channel on Slack on Patreon. Yep. Absolutely. Brilliant. Thank you both so much for that, guys. Uh, make sure you give Matt and Tom a follow. So you'll be back with me tomorrow to review the podcast, which will uh, include, obviously, a look at Brentford's fixture against Fulham this evening. And as promised, I've got Sam and Mig for you on Thursday as well to discuss Brighton and Palace. And I suspect after podcast could be Sam. Is Sanchez going to play or not? <laughs> but it just leaves me to say thanks again to Matt and to Tom. Uh, good luck this week, gents. Cue music, please. Manchild. Thank <laughs> you.